Hello, I'm Clover, and today we're going to solve the gas puzzle originally posted by Philip Newman on March 21st, 2024. This is a Kropke pair Sudoku, it's called Andromeda. So we have normal Sudoku rules, meaning we're placing the digits 1 through 9 once each in each row, each column, and each heavily outlined 3x3 three three region. And then on top of that, we have the Kropke pairs variant. What that means is that we have some black and white dots on the grid. Wherever we have a black dot, the two digits on either side are in a 1 to 2 ratio. In other words, one of them is twice as large as the other. And wherever we have a white dot, the two digits on either side are consecutive. In other words, one of them is one greater than the other, such as 4 and 5. Now, before we start solving this, I do want to point out something about it that I thought was really elegant. So if you just glance at this puzzle, it looks at a glance like it has this perfect rotational kind of 10 minus x symmetry where we have 9 paired with 1 rotationally opposite it, 2 paired with 8, 4 paired with 6, and so on. And that is something that you see pretty often in gas. We are, like a lot of puzzle setters, we have this, fan this fascination with symmetry, especially with rotational symmetry, and it often leads to puzzles that are kind of suited for gas because you'll get a deduction, and then you'll be able to kind of flip over to the rotationally opposite side of the grid from where you just made that deduction, and you'll be able to effectively use the same thing. Now this puzzle looks at first like it's no exception because we even have white and black dots that are rotationally opposite each other in these kind of matched pairs. However, Philip has actually done something really cheeky here. We can't make any assumptions about whether this puzzle actually has rotational symmetry because you can see every black dot is rotationally opposite a white dot and vice versa and black dots and white dots admit very different pairs of digits in this set of rules. You know, you can have on a black dot um, a 4 and an 8, but the corresponding pair would be 2 and 6, which is not valid for a white dot. So I assume that as we solve this, we're going to start to see various subtle and possibly more obvious breaks of symmetry. And so look out for those as we go through this puzzle. So this is Kropke pairs, and that means that our starting place is going to be to look for any runs of black dots that have more than two digits that see each other. And this is the most obvious one to me. I have three digits that are all in this 1 to 2, 1 to 2 ratio. They can't include a 1, so that tells me they have to be 2, 4, and 8. That's the only way I'm going to fit those digits in with those rules in Sudoku. Now this digit is consecutive with 8. It can't be a 9, therefore it is a 7. And then this has to be a 6 to be consecutive with a 7. That leaves us with a 3-5 pair. So let's look at some of these other black dots. It would be easy to assume that this one had to have that same kind of setup. Unfortunately, it doesn't, because technically these two digits could be the same. Since they're in different boxes, we could have like 3 and 3 there and a 6 in the middle. So don't assume when you start to fill that in. But what can we assume here? So we have a 1 to 2 ratio here. It doesn't include an 8. So we know it's either 1 and 2, 2 and 4, or possibly 3 and 6. And that's few enough that I feel confident pencil marking them in right now. So let's make that 3 and 6, 2 and 4, or possibly 1 and 2. Now 1 and 2 is right out just because if we put a 1 there, we would have to have twos on both sides of it. Two is in a one to two ratio with it and two is consecutive with it. So our only options really are two and four and three and six there. So let's leave that at that for now. Okay, we have this four here and that has to be next to either a two or an eight. We have this other pair here and this one's kind of restricted because it has to be a one to two ratio but we can't have a two or a four at all because of what's in the column already. So this actually has to be a three six pair. What does that leave us with in this column? So we still need a 1, a 5, a 7, and an 8. Now, some of those digits can't actually go on a black dot at all. 5 and 7 specifically are just not going to work on a black dot. There's nothing in the puzzle that could be in a 1 to 2 ratio with them, so we'll take that out. 6 has to be consecutive with this, so this certainly cannot be a 1 or an 8. And then we have another black dot here, which eliminates 5 and 7. So that we, now we have a 1-8 pair in the column, which gives this as a 5 or 7. Okay, if this is a 1 or an 8, then the digit next to it is either double 1, which is 2, or half of 8, which is 4. So we can pencil mark those in. And we can't quite go further with that just yet, so let's leave that with what we have for the moment. 
Now, what is this pair going to be? So these can't include a six, so they have to be either one and two or four and eight. So that can't be our one, so that can't be our two, and this can't be either a four or an eight. So, um, oh, actually, I oversimplified there. So what I said is correct, but I didn't fully explain why. Um, so it has to be one, two, two, four, or four, eight. The reason it can't be 2, 4 is that it would break this cell. You don't necessarily need to observe that. You can figure that out later as you start to fill in cells here. But let's just go with it for now. So it's either 1 and 2 or 4 and 8. can't be 4 and 8 because of the 4 and 8 in this column. So it is 1 and 2. So that makes this an 8, which makes this a 1 and fills in a 2 here. Also, because we have consecutive digits, that's a 3. We can resolve our pencil mark there into an 8 with a 4. 4 is only consecutive to 3 and 5, and there's a 3 in the row already, so that's now a 5, that's a 7, and that is a 5. And these two digits are going to be 4 and 9 to finish the region. 4 is consecutive with 3 and 5, but we can't use 5, so let's place a 3 there. Now we need a 5 and a 9 here, and we also need a 2 and a 7 to finish off here. And unfortunately, there's still two valid pairs that we could use here, so we've got to leave that for now. How about these other black dots? Uh, this puzzle is really yielding like a lot of black dots for us to work with. That's often the right starting place with Kropke pairs. So two has to be with either a one or a four, so we can pencil that in. Uh, this one doesn't have a three in it, so it's either one and two, two and four, or four and eight. It can't be four, eight, because both four and eight appear in this row already. So that's not gonna be an eight. And similarly to what we observed down here a moment ago, this can't be a 1, because then we would have to have a 2 on both sides, so this is either a 2 or a 4. We have this pair here that doesn't have a 2, and there are only two options that don't include a 2 in all. There's either a 4-8 option or a 3-6 option, and this cannot be an 8, so that cannot be a 4. And again, we can't quite finish that off yet. Okay, so 4 has to go with either 2 or 8. There's a 2 in the column already. You guys are probably screaming for me to finish that earlier. Well, tough. I got to it when I got to it. The 1 in this row has to go in one of those cells. We need a 2, a 6, and a 7 still to complete this row. So what can we do here? So this can't be a 6 or 7 because then it couldn't be consecutive to either of these digits. So that's going to be a 2 consecutive to a 3, which is in a 1 to 2 ratio with 6. The 3 makes this a 5, and now we have a 3 here. That's not a 2, so these are going to be 1, 6, and 7. 8 is next to either 7 or 9. Uh, 4 and 6, so these are both even. This is kind of a little shortcut we can use. If it's even, we know that the number that's next to it on its white dot is going to be odd. So that'll be 3, 5, or 7, and we can eliminate 7 because there's a 7 already there. Similarly here, this has to be next to 1, 3, or 5, but we actually have 1 and 3 already seeing that, which makes it a 5, and that tells us this is a 4. And that takes care of a lot going on here. This 2 also gives us a 7 and resolves this 3, 6 eventually. Nice. Okay. Let's carry on. So the 4 that we just placed tells us that this is a 1. So we can go ahead and place that real quick. And we need to place an 8 in this row. It can only go here. And we need to place 4 and 7 in row 6, which can only go in those positions. And now because we have a 7 here, that's a 9. And specifically, the 7 goes there because there's already a 4 in the column. These cells need to include a 1, which goes there, and they also need a 2 and 5. There's a 2 in this row, so we can take care of that. Across this row, we need 3, 5, and 9. This can't be a 3 or a 5, so it is a 9. And here we need 4, 6, and 7, and that can't be a 4 because there's already a 4 in the column. We need to place an 8 in column 3. It will have to go here. And our last digit is going to be either 6 or 7. Now let's look at row 9. This is starting to look pretty full. So I need 2, 4, and 9 in this row. And sure enough, I already have a 2 and 4 here, so that's going to be a 9. The 2 here will make that a 4 and make that a 2. So that's a 6, 5, 7, 4, 3. And 3 is in a 1 to 2 ratio with 6. Awesome. I have this 1, 6, 7 already filled in. So I need 5 and 9 to finish this region. And to finish this row, I'm going to need 3, 6, and 7. And they're pretty restricted already because I have 3 and 6 here. So that's going to be a 7, a 6, and a 3. 
Oh, and I could have gotten that six a million years ago, <laughs> um, but I see it now. So now I need a three and a six to finish this column, and I need to finish this row with a four, a six, and an eight, which will go in these positions. And let's finish off this column with a one and a five, and a seven and a nine to finish column nine. And we're just about done. We're rounding the finish. Seven and eight, one and seven. Fantastic. That is how you solve Philip Newman's Andromeda. Hope you guys enjoyed that. I really like a good uh, Kropke pair Sudoku. It is one of my favorite kind of standard like Sudoku contest variants that you see a lot. More commonly in contests, you'll see it as Kropke, so it'll have a negative constraint. We tend to go for the non-negative constraint version of Kropke pairs, just because that's a little bit easier to get your head around. The deductions tend to come more one at a time. But I think we've done standard Kropke and gas before too. Maybe we will again. Anyways, thank you for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed that, go ahead and click that subscribe button or leave a comment. See you next time.